Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a Django website on DreamHost. Now, if you're not familiar, Django is a Python framework for websites. Okay, so you can make a website with the Python programming language. And, you know, a few years back, I wanted to do this. I started with my very first Django website on DreamHost, and it was such a hard process to go through at the time. I kind of wish this video that I'm making today existed. So my hope is that this video will provide you value if you're thinking about hosting a Django website on DreamHost, or even if you're hosting it somewhere else, the process that we're gonna go through here is a, a fundamental process to setting up a Django website. So there's gonna be some specific things for DreamHost here, uh, but everything else after that is going to be a generic Django tutorial. So let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. I am in my DreamHost dashboard here, and what I'm gonna do just for the sake of this tutorial is to add a subdomain name to run my Django website from. So I'm gonna go into my manage domains section, and uh, I'm gonna use the domain name tonyflorida.me. So I do own that domain name, uh, but what I'm gonna do up top here is add a subdomain. So I'll click on this blue button here and we'll call this django.tonyflorida.me. Okay, so uh, for the, the www in your URL, I'm gonna leave it alone. I don't want it to redirect or anything like that. Um, the user that I'm gonna use is a user that I already have, and it's Lemonade, and that is, this user does have SSH access, so make sure your user has SSH access. And then uh, this is going to be located under the django.tonyflorida.me um, path on the local file system, or the remote file system. Now the very important thing that we wanna do here is to check this box for passenger and you'll see that's for Python apps. So that's gonna allow uh, DreamHost to know that this is a not a typical you know, PHP website. This is a Python website using Passenger. So um, this is just saying that your web directory must end in public to enable Passenger. Uh, changes automatically, we'll hit okay. All right, so everything else is fine. We'll fully host this domain. And while this sets up, it'll take you know a minute or so. Uh, we'll just fast forward through this. Okay, and after enough time has passed, we can log into our server via SSH with the credentials of your user. So I'm gonna open up a terminal window here and type in SSH, my username, Lemonade, at my domain name, django.tonyflorida.me. Hit enter. It's gonna ask for the password, so you can type that in or paste it in. And there we go, we're logged into the DreamHost server. If we do an LS here, you'll see that we have our directory for our subdomain. We'll go in here in a bit, but first I wanna check what version of Python you have. So type on in here Python uh, 3 dash capital V. And I'm working with Python 3.6.9, which is good. That's uh, sufficient for our use case. So uh, let's see where this is installed at. So we can type which Python 3, and that's at user bin Python 3. Now we don't wanna use that version of Python directly. Uh, what we're gonna do is set up a virtual environment for Python in order to be able to install packages via the pip package manager. So uh, we're gonna need to install like stuff like uh, Django and MySQL and, and all that good stuff. So uh, in order to do that, let's make sure we have an up-to-date version of pip. So we can do python 3-m pip install dash dash upgrade pip. And I think, uh, yeah, that'll be pretty quick. I already have the most up-to-date version so we can continue on. Let's do pip3 install virtual env for virtual environment. Um, there we go, so that's good, I have that now. And now we can create a virtual environment for Python. So we can type virtual env-p, uh, we'll reference that path, user bin python3, and then the name of our virtual environment, I'm just gonna call it dj, short for Django, uh, and that's gonna create that in this directory right here. So we'll do that. And this takes a little bit, so we'll fast forward through this. Okay, there we go. We have our virtual environment in this directory, so we can activate that by typing in source dj slash bin slash activate, okay? And now you can see that we're working out of the virtual environment with the prefix on the shell. 
uh, command prompt here, and we can verify that our, we're using that version of Python. We can say which Python, and instead of it being from user bin, uh, we see it out of our virtual environment directory, and we can do Python dash capital V, and we're still running Python 3.6.9, so that's perfect. Um, you, if you want to get out of this virtual environment for whatever reason, you can type in deactivate, and uh, you could do which Python now, and you're back to using the one installed at user bin. Um, and then if you just want to reactivate that, you can do source your, the name of your virtual environment slash bin slash activate. Okay, so now uh, just to confirm one more time, which Python, there we go. Um, let's install the pip packages that I was talking about. So these will be installed to the virtual environment. So we can do pip3 install Django and MySQL client. And if you need any other pip packages, you can do that at this time or in a, at, in a later future date. Um, we'll fast forward through this as well. Okay, we have those pip packages installed. Let's go ahead and create our Django project. So we can do that. Uh, again, we are in the root of our home directory. Let's go into the django.tonyflurida.me directory. And in here, what do we got? We got a public directory. So what we're gonna do is execute the Django admin command. Uh, we want to type in start project. And this is where we're getting into the Django specific aspect of this tutorial. And then hello world is going to be the name of our project. You can pick whatever you want for that. So hit enter. And if you do another LS, you'll see that we have a hello world directory and inside hello world, uh, we have a hello world subdirectory with a manage.py file. Those are standard Django project files. Um, what we want to do though is to create a passenger uh, web server gateway interface file so DreamHost, the DreamHost server knows how to interact with the Django uh, infrastructure. So we can do that by making a file in here called passenger underscore WSGI web server gateway interface dot pi and um, I'm going to copy some code in here that DreamHost recommends. I'll have this linked down in the description below. Um, but basically, you need to go through here and update some of these paths for your environment. So the interpreter is going to be located uh, in your Python virtual environment. Mine is home, lemonade, DJ for the virtual environment, bin Python 3. And then uh, what else we got down here? The name of your project, the Django project, it's going to be at the current working directory um, slash hello world. And then we do some insertions of paths uh, based on the virtual environment. So there's our bin directory, there's our lib directory with site packages, all relative to your virtual environment and your Django project. Uh, one last thing here is your project name dot settings. So that's your settings file. We'll be in there in just a little bit. So just remember, this will be this is a this is a directory. Hello world is a directory. Uh, that we just saw, and then there's a settings.py file in there. So that's what that's referencing here. Okay, so save that. And the next thing we want to do is um, set up static files. So static files are things like uh, CSS, JavaScript, um, images, things like that that don't change, stuff that's not dynamic, like your web pages themselves. So in order to do that, let's open up that hello world uh, settings file. So if we go in, into the hello world directory, the subdirectory under there, and then there's a file in there called settings.py. And uh, I can't remember, is there a static root by default? No, we have to add a static root. So right under your static URL, we're gonna add a line that looks like this. So the static root, this is a full absolute path to where uh, our static files are gonna be located. So if you remember, Django was, uh, or DreamHost was saying there's there needs to be a public directory um, and we're going to put all of our static files under that public directory. So give it the full path or you can do a relative path with some, uh, if you import OS and all that stuff. Um, but easiest uh, just for the sake of this tutorial is to put a full path to your static directory, which we will go ahead and create. So we'll save that change. And again, let's go into the public directory and then we'll make mkdir, a static file, or static folder, s-t-a-t-i-c, um, just so that exists. All right, so uh, in here, they got your default um, fav icons. Uh, you can change those, swap those out in the future if you need to. 
So what I want to do now is go into the Hello World directory, uh, which is right here, CD Hello World. And remember that manage.py file, we can use some of the built-in uh, features for Django to move all of our static files into that static directory that we just created. So we can do that with Python manage.py collect static. Okay, and that's gonna go ahead and get all those static files copied into the directory that we just defined. Um, and then, yeah, I, actually that's good. We That's all we need to do for static files. Uh, we wanna edit one more thing in the settings.py file. So if you go to hello world uh, settings.py again, we need to make sure that the allowed hosts contains our URL. So my URL is Django dot Tony Florida dot me and uh, I want to do the www version of that too so www dot Django dot Tony Florida dot me um, otherwise you will get some type of connection error if you don't explicitly define that so we'll save that and at this point if we try to go to our website uh, I'm actually not 100% sure what's going to happen but um, there's one other step that we might have to take, and I, I want to show you guys what that is anyway. So if you go to django.tonyflurida.me, uh, let's see if it runs. And it does. It does run the uh, default landing page for Django, which is great. This is the starting off point for all Django projects. Uh, the one thing I wanted to make you aware of is that in order for the web server that DreamHost uses to know about the changes that you make as you're developing your uh, website, you have to tell it that and they have a very specific way that you can uh, communicate your changes so uh, what we need to do for that is to go uh, where are we at right here go back a level to the root url here okay and what we're going to do in here is just make a directory called temp and we're going to make just a file in here called um, restart restart dot text okay so any time, and if you look at this uh, ls-la temp, if you look at this, uh, the restart.txt file, um, the last time it was modified was 9.15. Now, I think what's happening here is basically the web server for Django or some other type of logic is going to look at the timestamp for this file, and if it has update it from the last time it's seen it, then it's going to know that there's changes that it needs to apply to the web server. So if we do in the future, after you're done making your changes to your website and you don't, and for some reason you don't see the user interface update or the logic update, uh, you have to first touch this restart.txt file. And then, like I said, that'll communicate to the web server that uh, you had made changes and it needs to propagate those to the user interface. Um, that's it guys. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. I have a few other tutorials about Django specifically related to production settings. So check those out. Thank you guys for watching. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.